Okay, so, many people have been talking about the YSL indictment and indeed, it is packed with a lot of violence. We will be doing a full story soon. What we will say now, is that many members who were indicted have been involved in other indictments prior to this one. It starts with petty things, like jumping people, and smash and grabs, but eventually, things escalate. The younger days, sandbox crimes gaining rep, turns to grand theft auto, armed robbery, actual attempt murders, and lastly, murder. The crew came up on Cleveland Avenue, and were known as the Rock Gang, which stands for, Raised on Cleveland. They are affiliated with the Sex Money Murder Bloods. I'm not going to get too much into that right now. There are two sides, the streets and the sidewalks. For each generation, you will have a number of people who will go on to prosper in their respective sides. It seems like everyone meets at the top somewhere. An example would be a famous or rich person being robbed by a person or crews who participate in high-stake crimes, hence this story. So, Young Thug and Gunner was arrested along with the 28 members of the YSL gang. The Fulton County DA slapped Young Thug with a fresh indictment involving a machine gun that also names Yak Gotti. One of the name came out in the YSL indictment, and that name was Trontavius, also known as Slug or Tick. Back in 2013, he was involved in an armed robbery. So let's get into it. Javaris Crittenton was an honor student at Southwest Atlanta Christian. He was a baller, and he would win a state title there with Dwight Howard. After attending college in 2007, he was the 19th pick in the first round, drafted by the Lakers. It's alleged, during his time in L.A., he would align himself with the Mansfield Gangster Crips. They were founded in West Los Angeles in the West Pico Boulevard and South Labrie Avenue area. Their territory is bordered by Olympic Boulevard in the north to Venice Boulevard in the south between Hauser Boulevard. Being affiliated with the Crips makes you a target of the Bloods by default and any other opposing street gangs for that matter. In December 2008, he was traded to the Washington Wizards. There, him and Gilbert Arenas were involved in a locker room confrontation involving guns. He lost a lot of money in a card game against Gilbert Arenas. Some jokes became serious, where Crittenton threatened to shoot Gilbert in the knees, or something to that extent. According to Gilbert, he placed four guns on a chair, and left a note telling him to pick one. Meaning, he was allowing Javaris to choose the gun he wanted to use to shoot him. A month later, in 2010, Crittenton pleaded guilty and was given a year of probation on a misdemeanor gun possession charge. Two days later, Crittenton and Arenas were suspended for the rest of the season by NBA Commissioner David Stern. He was released by the Wizards following the suspension, while Arenas rejoined the team. As we stated, Crittenton was aligned with the Crips and eventually became a full-fledged member. In October, Abebe and two other members of the Mansfield Gangster Crips, Cecil Loran and Javier Romero Angulo, were attempting to shoot Kevin Green, a member of a rival gang, the Playboy Gangster Crips. In their efforts, they missed their target and ended up hitting Green's wife. His wife was pregnant at the time of the shooting. Just three days later, Crittenton used his credit card to purchase a one-way ticket for Romero Angulo to fly from Los Angeles to Atlanta. By July of that year, and still on suspension from the NBA, Crittenton was questioned by Los Angeles homicide detectives. Specifically, they wanted to know about the ticket and his connection to two of the Crips who were charged with the murder. Crittenton acknowledged that he was friends with Romero Angulo and Abebe, and that he frequently had phone conversations and exchanged text messages with the two. He said he heard about the murder, which took place two months prior, from news reports. He only purchased the airline ticket for Romero Angulo because Abebe had told him Romero Angulo needed to hurry up and book a flight quickly and didn't have the credentials needed to do so. He said he knew nothing of the shooting. He also denied any affiliations to the gang. Despite all this though, he has tattoos on his body, signify membership to the Crips, and also put money on the accounts of Romero and Abebe. He later admitted that he is in fact a Manfield Crip and member of the Eight Trays. Anyway, April 20th, 2011, would be the mark of his downfall. An hour before midnight, he and his cousin Doug left a barbershop on Cleveland Avenue in southwest Atlanta. South Atlanta, if you know, you know. But Crittenton had frequented the area, he's from around there, he has ties and he's familiar with the people, so we can assume, it's nothing, we good. He didn't think nothing of it. At that point, after leaving the barbershop, fresh cut, 
Crittenton, and Doug were held at gunpoint by four men. He was robbed of $55,825 worth of property, including a black diamond necklace that Crittenton valued at $25,000. Also, in a police report, was a black diamond watch worth $30,000. A witness was familiar with the guys who committed the robbery. Police would identify them as Trontavius Stevens, Demario Stevens, Demontanez Stevens, and Antonio Sumlin. According to the witness, Crittenton knew that Trontavius, aka Lil Tick, was one of the people that robbed him. Crittenton had looked Lil Tick in the face during the armed robbery and recognized him from the neighborhood. When it came to the initial robbery, Jones, the barber, told police that Crittenton did not have faith in law enforcement officials to make an arrest and, as a result, Crittenton, very upset, wanted to take matters into his own hands. Allegedly, Crittenton told law enforcement officials during the course of their investigation not to worry and that he would handle the matter. Although he was shown photographs of people who were potentially the perps, he declined to cooperate. He felt betrayed because he grew up in the neighborhood and they treated him like a plate. He felt that he had given back to the community and showed he wasn't being Hollywood, but look what happened. In my opinion, he wasn't moving tact, but people get got everywhere, you just have to try not to get caught lacking. Most times, it means not going anywhere unnecessary. But who am I, just a person who has lived through times that could have went bad, but is old enough to understand how to avoid it altogether. The ones that robbed Crittenton were all part of the Atlanta criminal gang, raised on Cleveland or ROC. At this time, ROC had 100 core members and possibly more than 200 overall. They were classified as 30 Deep and Red Cartel, all being subsets to the Bloods. You had the robbers and you had the enforcers. They were in different lanes. One crew was more about making the money and the other was much more violent. Specifically, Lil Tick and Antonio Sumlin, who was also known as Obama, are two members of YSL who were currently charged in the indictment along with Young Thug and Gunner. In no way are we saying that Young Thug or Gunner are involved in this, as we understand that people move independently. It's just a testament to how they were really outside, period. As for Lil Tick, he had a history of robbing people, Crittenton happened to be just one of his victims. Obama was a dangerous YSL member. On July 26th of 2011, he was charged with the July 16th shooting death of Randall Dobson on Poplar Street in Morrow. It was alleged that Obama shot Dobson twice in the leg in a set-up drug deal. Obama and two or three others were to sell Dobson a pound of weed for 1100 They never had any weed to begin with, but wanted fast money, so they decided to sell him some fake weed. That plan was never executed, as the gang decided to rob him instead. Obama pointed a handgun at Dobson, who slapped it away. Obama exited the car and shot him once in the leg as Dobson tried to flee, said police. Obama got back into the car and followed Dobson toward Brand Boulevard and fired again, hitting Dobson a second time in the leg. He would be transported to the hospital for medical attention where he passed away. Police said Obama changed his cell phone number to avoid any connection to Dobson, but they were able to track him through the records. He allegedly told police he never contacted them about the involvement of others in the shooting because he was as guilty as they were. So, there was a 10-day gap between the time Obama committed the murder and was charged. Between those 10 days, Javaris Crittenton was robbed for a second time. On July 20th, six days before the murder, Crittenton and Doug were partying at Club Onyx, an adult club in Atlanta's upscale Buckhead neighborhood. That night, had the black Porsche and sported thousands of dollars worth of jewelry. They headed back to South Atlanta and was accompanied by another man named Richard. They had met him at the club earlier in the evening while partying. On the way back to South Atlanta, Richard was indecisive about directions, unsure and mixy about the drop-off location. After arriving at 474, Holderness Street, they let Richard out. As they got back in their car, they soon found themselves blocked by a white SUV. Three men armed with guns, one wearing a red bandana around his neck, forced Crittenton and Doug to lay face down. At that point, they removed their valuables. 
Doug told police, who arrived at the scene around 5 a.m., that he was pistol whipped. Both he and Crittenton refused medical attention. Crittenton was robbed of a $20,000 diamond bracelet, a $20,000 diamond ring, and a $15,000 Audemars Pichuet watch. In addition, a 40 caliber was taken from Crittenton's car. Again, he was hit for over 50 k in jewelry. The cops never found out who did it the first time, and Crittenton was no help to them anyway. He was once again a victim, but this time, he would set out to do the victimizing. Someone close to the situation said that Crittenton came through the block off 2900, making drives to look for the people who robbed him, including Lil Tick. The person asked Crittenton if he was still on the hunt for the people who had victimized him, but said nothing and walked away angrily. It was also said by someone that he came through one time looking for his robbers and had a 40 caliber on his lap. It was pride that would make him retaliate, but also, he was a crip and the cappers were bloods. On August 16, 2011, there was an attempt on the life of DeMontanez Stevens. He was shot at in an incident that police believed involved Crittenton. Not sure if this is Lil Tick's brother or not. Two days after the shooting, on Twitter, he posted, Got the streets in my veins like a poisonous IV. Then, on August 18, things turned deadly. At 9.50 p.m. that night, a vehicle pulled up to 2915, making drive. Julian Jones and Lil Tick were sitting out front. They were on their way to a barbecue, or had just arrived, or whatnot. A shooter sitting in the back seat of a black Tahoe fired four rounds from an assault rifle. Jones was hit in the right hip. Less than two hours later, she was pronounced dead, leaving behind her four children. Lil Tick was not hit in the shooting. According to documents, Crittenton's cousin Doug went to an Enterprise rent-a-car location in Fayette County, south of Atlanta, and rented a black Chevy Tahoe SUV. Witnesses corroborated this whole situation. After Jones' death, Crittenton flew to Los Angeles. The FBI arrested him at John Wayne Airport in Orange County just 11 days later. When police searched his home, they found an AK-47 assault rifle, a 12-gauge shotgun, and a 40 caliber pistol. The investigation showed that Crittenton's left middle fingerprint was found on the driver's side rear passenger door handle of the SUV. Lil Tick, who initially identified Crittenton as the shooter in a lineup, told the assistant district attorney prosecuting the case in February 2012 that he did not see the shooter and he had never seen Javari's Crittenton before. He said he could only identify him because his neighbors showed him Crittenton's photo on the computer. After all the court stuff, he would eventually plead guilty. Crittenton was sentenced to 23 years. Here it is, 2022, a decade and change after this situation, and Lil Tick is involved in this YSL indictment. Don't forget, Obama is also involved in the indictment. So that's two guys. As we stated, they are charged with much more than robbery. But yeah, that's about it for this one, just a quick little story for you all before we do the big one. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.